Unit 4, Road to Revolution, Chapter 12, Texas Wins Independence, Lesson 2, Victory at San Jacinto. We will learn that with his army trained, Sam Houston attacked the Mexicans at San Jacinto and secured Texan independence. Terms to know, strategy, a plan for a course of action, siesta, a traditionally traditional early afternoon rest, common in Spanish and Spanish American culture, a symbol to gather together, casualty, a soldier who is killed, wounded, captured, or missing, Provision, a single part in a larger legal document. Sidney Sherman moved from Kentucky to Texas with a group of fighters to help with win the Texas Revolution. Here's a geography connection, the Battle of San Jacinto. The Texan and Mexican armies were positioned on opposite ends of an open field with infantry, cavalry, and artillery similarly placed. Sam Houston was a war hero in the Texas Revolution and served as a senator and governor. This famous 1895 painting by Henry Arthur McArdle depicts the Battle of San Jacinto. The artist did extensive research to make sure the details of the painting were accurate. In this famous painting of Santa Ana's surrender, the Mexican general is standing and the wounded Houston is lying down. The San Jacinto battleground looks like this today with a monument dedicated to the battle rising near where the Mexican army was positioned. Before the battle, guiding question, what factors determine the outcome of the Battle of San Jacinto? On April 18, 1836, Texan scout Def Smith told General Houston that the Mexican army was moving to the San Jacinto River. On April 19th, Houston set up camp in an oak grove right by rising ground on Buffalo Bayou where it joined the San Jacinto River. The trees and the rising ground hid the Texans from view. Buffalo Bayou was behind the Texans and the San Jacinto River was on their left. In front of them was a prairie with Vince's Bayou on their right. Houston's army numbered just over 900 men. Santa Ana's army camped on a hillside on the San Jacinto River. To the right and rear of the Mexican camp were marshland and swamps. The Mexicans built a barricade of saddles, trunks, and baggage. Part of Santa Anna's strategy or plan of action was to remain in place. He was counting on the Texans to fight defensively as they had before. A small skirmish occurred on the afternoon of April 20th. Neither side felt prepared yet for a larger battle. However, Santa Anna was awaiting reinforcements in Houston wanted to give his men a rest. During the skirmish, a private named Mirabeau B. Lamar distinguished himself and was put in charge of the Texas Cavalry. Houston's army was a mix of Texans and volunteers from the United States and other countries. Juan Seguin commanded a company of Tejanos. After the loss of the Alamo, he was even more determined to fight Santa Ana. A Texan victory. Guiding question, how did the Texans win the Battle of San Jacinto? On the morning of April 21, 1836, Mexican General Martin Perfecto de Cos arrived with 540 men. Santa Ana's force now numbered about 1,300. Cos and his men had marched almost nonstop to reach San Jacinto, so they were tired and hungry. Santa Ana was confident that there would be no battle until the next day. It had grown warm. Soon he and many of his officers were taking a siesta, a traditional afternoon rest. Casa's men had arrived over a bridge at Vince's Bayou. Houston sent Def Smith and others to destroy the bridge. This would stop reinforcements from reaching Santa Ana. It would also cut off a retreat for the Mexicans and Texans. Houston called a war council of his highest ranking officers. Two wanted to attack, but most thought they should wait for Santa Ana to move. Houston announced that they would attack the Mexicans the next day. The volunteers did not want to wait, however, and insisted on a vote. Each company voted in favor of fighting that day. Houston went along with the decision. By 3.30 that afternoon, Houston had assembled or gathered his men. The Kentucky volunteers were on the far left with Edward Burleson's Texans to, to their right. In the center were the twin sisters with 30 men under George W. Hockley. To their right was another line of infantry. Mirabeau v. Lamar and his cavalry were placed far to the right. Houston was near the twin sisters in the center. In the center. To the Texans, no, the Texans approached when unnoticed. Santa Anna had not ordered any scouts to watch the enemy. 
The Texans were near the Mexican barricade when the Mexican bugles sounded a warning. <clears throat> By then, the Mexican cannon was useless. When it fired, the shells soared over the Texans. The men in charge of the twin sisters had positioned them in front of the Mexican barricade. The cannons blew a hole in the barricade and the Texans stormed through. They shouted, Remember the Alamo. Remember Goliad. The Mexican camp was in confusion. Fusion. Mexican soldiers waited for orders, but their officers could not be heard above the noise. Some Mexican soldiers stopped fighting and surrendered. Others tried to run across the prairie, only to be stopped by Lamar's cavalry. In 18 minutes, the battle was over. The Texans spent several more hours capturing Mexican soldiers who tried to escape. Houston's army suffered very light casualties. Fewer than 10 Texans were killed or fatally wounded. 30 others were wounded, including Houston, who had an ankle injury. Mexican casualties were much greater. In his report to President Burnett, Houston listed 630 Mexicans killed and another 730 taken prisoner. The next day, the prisoners included Santa Ana. He had slipped away during the fighting. He was found dressed in the uniform of a common soldier. The Texans did not recognize him, but his own men did. After San Jacinto, Houston and Santa Ana each described the fight. Houston wrote a report to President Burnett. He told how the battle lasted only 18 minutes and commented on the daring and courage of his men. He credited them with having made victory possible. Santa Ana wrote that the battle was lost because he did not have enough men and because the men he had were tired and low on provisions. He also blamed the loss on features of the battleground and on his men's lack of vigilance. He said, none of these causes depended directly or indirectly upon myself. For the Texans, the capture of Santa Ana was a great achievement. Had Santa Ana escaped, he might have raised a new army and continued fighting. At Houston's request, Santa Ana signed an order instructing that all Mexican troops withdraw to south of the Rio Grande. After math of San Jacinto, Guiding question, what happened after the Battle of San Jacinto? President Burnett moved the government to Velasco. Santa Ana was taken there to sign two treaties. One treaty was made public, the other was secret. The public treaty had a provision or part of a legal document saying Santa Ana would never again fight against Texas. Also, Mexican troops had to leave Texas right away. Another provision said prisoners of war would be exchanged. All property seized by Mexican forces had to be returned to its owners. In the secret treaty, Santa Ana agreed to convince Mexico's government to recognize Texas independence. In return, Santa Ana would be allowed to return to Mexico. Santa Ana also agreed to persuade Mexico to set the Texas boundary at the Rio Grande. Unfortunately, Mexico called the Velasco treaties illegal and refused to recognize Texas independence.